Welcome everyone to the Goodrich Teams Town Hall on the Boston real estate market. Um, I want to thank you all for joining this town hall. Um, this will be an ongoing series I'm going to be doing every Friday with guests uh, around the real estate industry, lenders, um, attorneys, developers, um, and other professionals that are in the field um, to try to get a sense of the current real estate climate and uh, try to you know make sense of how to uh, navigate through it uh, during this tough time. Um, my guest today is my real estate coach, Steve Schull. Uh, Steve uh, has an extensive background in coaching. Uh, he coaches hundreds of teams um, and agents throughout the country. Um, and he can speak a little bit more to the national pulse of uh, what he's seeing from some of the top minds in the industry. And um, I'll, uh, I'll let you kind of introduce yourself a little bit, Steve. Good morning, everybody. I can't see anybody. I hope someone's out there. Uh, again, my name is Steve Scholl, and I live out in the Los Angeles, California area. And as Ethan mentioned, I am a real estate coach. I coach real estate agents. I've been doing it for 25 plus years. Uh, my, my background, I played professional football for the Miami Dolphins for four years, played in a Super Bowl, Super Bowl 17, a long, long time ago, uh, tore my knee up, went back on an MBA from the University of Miami, worked on Wall Street for about five years, worked for Solomon Brothers, and then in 1991, got into residential real estate. And in 1993, started my career as a real estate coach and have been doing that ever since. As Ethan mentioned, I work with agents, top producing agents and teams all across the country. Obviously, we're going through something now that none of us have ever encountered uh, in life. And this is a very challenging situation and in, in talking with agents all across the country, what, what I find interesting is in many ways, your perception of what's going on is, is colored by where you live, specifically in talking with real estate agents. Agents who live on the coast in New York City and California their activities have been restricted dramatically. In fact, agents in, in California- We have some, uh, for some reason, this feed just stopped um, on Facebook. So let me uh, try to pull it back up here. No problem. Okay, we're back online on Facebook. Sorry about the delay. Um, and as Steve was saying, um, I'll, I'll let him get back into it, but um, you were talking about uh, the current climate, Steve. Yes, in working with agents all across the country, in many ways, people's perception of what's going on is colored by where they live in the country. Agents who are working in New on the coast, either on the East Coast, New York, or in California, have been very restricted in what they can do business-wise. In many ways, they've been shut down completely. Mm -hmm. And the idea of, of going out and showing property is not a possibility at all. Yeah, so here in Massachusetts, um, on Tuesday, the governor released that we were essential um, to you know real estate agents, um, any type of escrow officer, whether it's an attorney, um, you know, the registry of deeds still is open and um, we're able to conduct showings, but there's a strong um, a message to just make sure you're being cautious and keep it to um, small groups. And if you don't need to be doing it to obviously not participate in things that could help uh, spread this even further. And it's it, it, in California, uh, it was re, uh, real estate was reclassified as an essential business this past weekend. However, at the same time, it really didn't change anything. It's, it, 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 it's really 
agents really aren't supposed to be going out and showing property. And so, and then in the middle of the country, there's different parameters in terms of what people are doing. So it really varies, varies based on what, what state you're in, in terms of what an agent can or can't do. The other interesting thing, it also, for, for agents, they're trying to balance, you know, what's best for society, what's best for their client, and what's best for their family or their own, their own life. And so real estate agents are, are going through a very challenging time in terms of how do they actually move forward? Do they move forward at all? Because there really is no clear direction in terms of what people are supposed to be doing. And so wherever you are, you know, if, if, if right now you're thinking about buying a home or you're thinking about selling a home, it's, it's, it's a very challenging time. What I've seen in working with agents all across the country, those people who were current buyers who were currently under contract in escrow to buy a property and close on a property, just some rough numbers, about half of those buyers, when this thing you know, got really bad, decided they did not want to go forward and dropped out of the deal. Then the other buyers who were in escrow, many of them wanted to renegotiate the price that they had agreed to. Right. Anywhere from, and again, these are just rough averages, from a 1% reduction to a 10% a reduction in price. And so, you know, that, that's created some uncertainty in the marketplace. And so, you know, if you're a buyer right now, you know, do you want to buy in this environment that, 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 you know, we don't know what's, what's happening next in many markets across the country, there was a real lack of inventory, not a lot of homes to look at. You were in bidding on homes where you had multiple buyers bidding on homes. And so some buyers look at this as an opportunity to maybe not have as much competition. Sellers, on the other hand, they're faced with, you know, can I sell my home without it being shown? And I'm sure, you know, that's something that you're dealing with right now, Ethan, mm -hmm. in terms of the level of showings has, has gone down. And again, depending on your area, in some areas, there are no showings virtually anymore. So the question becomes, if I need to sell my home right now, can I really do that? Is it yeah. better to wait? Where are prices going to be when this thing eventually passes? And going back to my days on and walk uh, working on Wall Street, one thing that I'm certain about is no one has the ability to predict the future. Nobody. Mm -hmm. And everyone is really stepping in to an unknown right now at this point in time. Yeah. So, I mean, in, you know, in Massachusetts right now, we're uh, obviously faced with these same challenges where, you know, we have to um, decide what's best for us and our family first and foremost. Um, and we want to make sure that um, if it is a, a situation that uh, you need to be out at, you know, with clients or at a showing that you're, um, you're keeping that as the first priority um, with, you know, the way that we're handling um, open houses, um, it tends to be different from case to case. There's sellers that, first of all, don't want you in their property um, because they're owner occupied. Then you also have, um, you know, vacant, vacant apartments. And then you also have, you know, apartments that might are, are condos and, and homes that have the tenants in them. Um, and we're handling them, um, you know, with, with as much respect as we can. Um, you know, for the safety of, of everyone that's living there, as well as the agents and, and people that are going. The, the challenge that happens is, you know, people have to be comfortable with the, the normal right now of virtual tours, um, you know, not having 
complete confidence in the process with, uh, uh, you know, where, where, where the uh, registry or any um, delays with, with lending um, and just access to the home. So um, we found that, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's still a, a, you know, going into this market, there was um, quarter one of, of 2020 had been outperforming in Boston. Uh, 2019's quarter one, and we had seen uh, almost a 10% uh, increase in sales um, prior to this um, happening, and then almost uh, $70 per foot um, on average in Boston, uh, homes were selling for um, more than the year before. So it, the fundamentals were a pretty good market in Boston, and um, you know people were getting geared up to. Um, really, really make a splash, whether as a buyer or a seller, there's a little bit more supply than the past year. And, um, you know, it, 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 it's certainly a, a shame that this got in the way, but I, I don't think it's held people back from having interest. We've still gotten the same amount of calls. Um, and we still have a lot of sellers that are eager to find out when they're going to put the properties on the market um, and buyers on, on when the properties will be available. But certainly um, a mix of apprehension amongst both buyers and sellers right now. I would, to anyone who's out there, you know, thinking about buying or selling in this environment, I would really encourage you, you, you you've got to work with an agent who's really experienced, who can help you navigate through these times. You want to be very collaborative in your efforts because everyone is stepping in to the unknown, this is this is different. This is not the same. And as Ethan talked about, when we started out the year on January first, it was it was like right out of the gate, real estate markets across the country took off right on January first, and it looked like this was going to be an incredible year for real estate. You know, moving into what is normally the busy time of the year, spring. And then all of a sudden the lights went out. Mm -hmm. And so this is going to be an opportunity for, for certain people. And I would encourage all of you to, you know, if you're uh, working with Ethan to really sit down with him and maybe not sit down, <laughs> do it via zoom and, and, and really talk through the situation because there are, so many variables that are uncertain at this point in time. Yeah. And so, you know, one of the things I want to talk about, and I don't know if you're seeing this as well, is just, you know, one of the, some of the questions are, how am I supposed to be prepared if, if your goal is to buy or sell a property? Um, you know, one of the things I've, I've helped with, um, with sellers is, you know, trying to position yourself in a way that, um, you know, you're not behind the eight ball when this tsunami of listings comes through, you know, middle of May, middle of June, whenever, you know, the, the, the social distancing ban starts getting lifted um, and how to get ahead of it. So, you know, some things that um, we've been working on is utilizing um, back channel uh, off market opportunities. So Compass coming soon is certainly um, one of one of the main areas we network our listings on um, and allows you to put a property on the market um, and advertise it and get a sense of the price, get a sense of the feedback from the agents and buyers that are searching on compass.com um, for properties. They'll be able to search for coming soon listings. And then also using other channels, top agent network, which is, you know, uh, it's a network of, of agents in the city. Uh, it's a network of agents in the city that are um, doing off-market um, advertising, and um, they're they're positioning their properties on off-market. Uh, you know, for for buyers and sellers out there that are, um, you know, they they can't find what they're looking for online. So those two networks, and, and along with um, you know some other ones that we use in Boston, um, certainly help get you prepared ahead of time for at least getting the word out. It might only might only hit 10% uh, uh, of the people, but um, it's gonna hit a lot of the agents. And if the agents are doing their job representing you as a buyer, um, they should be on there and searching uh, off-market opportunities. 
And the other thing as a buyer, um, it's really important to talk to your lender and make sure you're talking to them over and over because we're still seeing a lot of bidding wars. And when, when the selling agent is calling that, that lender to verify the assets or income, they need to know that that lender has talked to them in, in you know, the last couple of weeks, make sure they still have a job, make sure their stocks or assets, if they're using those as collateral or you know, as their down payment, that it's still intact and, and that the product that they can sell, because a lot of lenders have uh, switched uh, how their, their products are, are being sold. Some of them aren't doing as many uh, jumbo loans, switching more to government-backed uh, loans, like conventional loans. Um, so even if it is an option for them, so you just don't want to be caught when the listing agent's going to call the lender and the lender has no idea what, you know, what, what the current state is for that buyer. Um, so, you know, talking to your lender ahead of time and making sure that they're um, vetted on what's going on with you in your life right now, um, how you've been affected financially and how, um, you know, if you've lost any, if you've lost your job or at risk of losing it and, you know, what would happen if, if X, Y, and Z happen. In your life so those things um, we found that have been effective um, we I just did my first uh, virtual offer where uh, I hadn't seen the property the I, you know only through virtual tour the the buyer hadn't seen the property because they are sick with the with the COVID-19 um, they're quarantined right now um, we weren't going to be able to go to the inspection so we're gonna have a virtual inspection um, and, um, you know, at some point they, they try to get into the home, but it would have been, you know, maybe two months away. We ended up losing. It was a multiple bidding situation, um, but it was interesting and they're comfortable going forward uh, in this process for, you know, homes that make sense for them. So it's, it's very interesting how the, uh, the technology has allowed people to still bid and uh, still stay involved in the market. And this is happening on a regular basis. There's a lot of bidding wars and, um, you know, even if it's not virtually and people are doing staggered open houses, they're still able to, to bid on properties and get into escrow. The, the one thing I would share, and again, every market's going to have a, it, it, its own characteristics and nuances. If you're a seller, the, the momentum has shifted from the sellers more to the buyer. And you have to be realistic in your expectations of what the, the market will bear right now. The price you thought you were going to get for your home a month ago or two months ago may have changed. So, you know, consult with Ethan in terms of where the market is. We're, we're, we're in a different environment. And even though you may not be able to show your home in the way that you, you have been able to show it in the past, the odds are likely you're going to get a better price for your home today than three months from now. Mm -hmm. you know, those are the odds. I'm not saying, I, again, I don't have the ability to predict where things are going. However, it, it, it feels that way. If you're thinking about buying a home, a, I, I, the first thing you want to do, A, can I, do I find the home that I want? That, that's where it starts. Secondly, from a long-term perspective, you know, am, am I making this decision for the short-term or the long-term? And any real estate decision made in the short-term has risk. Over the long-term, real estate has proven to be a great investment. So I wouldn't be so worried about price if you're buying for the long term. And then the third thing that Ethan talked about, and it's really critical right now, is getting with your lender because that market is shifting and changing. And you have to be very clear with your lender in terms of your ability to get a loan and get closed. And that's a very important part of the process right now. So on the sell side, the momentum may have shifted more to the buyer. You have to be much more realistic about pricing. And on the buy side, if you're buying for the long term, then price isn't 
the thing that's most important. Right. Yeah. And, and just flexibility in general. Um, you know, one of the big things as well is we've been adding a lot of language through the Massachusetts Bar Association and the Massachusetts Association of Realtors. They have some scripts in place that we're adding to purchase and sale agreements um, in, in regards to COVID-19. It's a separate addendum that will get attached to your offer or purchase and sale. And, you know, what this is outlining is, um, you know, just a lot of unforeseen um, extensions or, you know, problems that could happen, uh, you know, with the, with the purchase or sale and um, just making sure that language is in place because you need to have flexibility on time. And if you're putting an offer in as a buyer, um, that should be one of the, the main things you should be concerned about is giving yourself enough time to get that mortgage contingency um, uh, or that mortgage commitment date and, you know, making sure you have enough time to close with all the, all the delays that are happening with attorneys, lenders, appraisers. A lot of appraisers have switched now to drive by appraisals so that they're not having to go inside the house. Um, and I just got a message from an appraiser for a, a deal I'm under agreement that uh, I have to go in with my phone and take photos of the property and then send them to the appraisal uh, company for them to do their report um, in some type of live fashion. So they're looking at you know creative ways to keep doing business and um, keeping these deals going, but it's gonna be a lot slower and they're backlogged um, weeks and months in advance in some cases. The refinance market right now is bananas. Everyone is trying to, to lock in low rates um, and including myself, I've gone, I've gone through the process and the, the, the banks are backlogged and uh, some of them aren't even taking applications on you know, jumbo or non-conforming loans right now. So there's just a lot of delays in the pipeline um, and they're trying to work through it. And you just have to make sure that timing is one of the main things you're thinking of right now from a seller and buyer. No, I think you, uh, you, you hit the, the nail right on the head. You have to be flexible right now. You have to be flexible. And as Ethan will, will tell you, things are changing on a daily basis. You know, today there's this news and this is the way it is. And then tomorrow things change. So you, you, you really have to stay in close contact with Ethan if you're working with him right now. And you ha as, as Ethan said, you have to be flexible in this environment. It's a very fluid environment. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then, you know, any other things that you're seeing, Steve, from um, the market um, when we're going to bounce back? Because I know you're, you're with a lot of teams across the country and, and agents. Have they given you any indication on when they're planning on listing some of the properties that are queued up? For, for me, you know, I have um, a bunch of sellers that are putting their properties on. And right now we're just in a, um, a, a purgatory limbo status. Um, they're, they're trying to do their best to get it prepped and we're trying to advertise it off market, but, um, we really don't have a, a hard deadline. It's more of a soft May 15th is kind of what we're looking at right now. Um, you know, and some of them are going to do it a little bit earlier, but, um, that's kind of what we're seeing here in Boston. Has, has, has anyone, um, spoken to that a little bit on, on when they're going to list? Yeah, it, it is a really big struggle. Agents are, you know, working with their clients to really figure out you know, what you, you are planning to come on the market right now. You may be in process of getting your home staged or having repairs done, prepping for the market. And what do you do? Do you continue forward with that process? Do you come on now? Do you wait? Uh, from what I'm seeing, most people are choosing to wait at mm -hmm. this point in time, which goes back to what you said earlier. That might indicate. Uh, a lot, you know, the spring market moves into the summer market and everything gets pushed back three or four months. Again, though, no one really knows where, what, what the scope of the situation is going to be. Mm -hmm. Activity, to, to answer your question short, activity has really been curtailed and fewer and fewer people are deciding to bring their, their property to market right now. Um. So, uh, you know, in, in terms of, uh, I guess everyone's going to have to make 
their decisions according to their local markets. And, um, you know, for us, even neighborhood to neighborhood is different. Um, in Boston, there's so many small neighborhoods and small towns, even surrounding um, the major metro areas. And everything is, you know, on a case by case basis with each town and neighborhood. You know, what we're seeing in, in Cambridge is a lot different than, than, than Somerville and Medford, which have different stay at home orders than Boston. Um, so you have to be cognizant of that as a seller. Um, and then also, um, you know, uh, as a buyer, you know, you don't know what the state of uh, is, is this a town or, or, or neighborhood that is getting a lot more bidding going on right now. So um, it's, it's really important to be hyper local with each neighborhood in town right now to what their current um, process is. Um, I guess I know a lot of people are going through that, you know, I've, I've heard this mentioned a few times. The, the stages of grief that um, are happening. And I, I feel like I've gotten to the acceptance stage, which is what is the last stage of stopping to try to fight it, to fight this, that is, it is the new normal. And just having to be um, creative, opportunistic, and you know, having a, a abundance men mentality to um, when there is an opportunity or when there is um, you know, um, new information just to, to work with it and, and try to do your best to give yourself a good position uh, for success. So, I mean, that's been my mentality um, for the last couple of weeks. I was fighting it for, you know, the first few weeks of March, but now I'm, uh, I'm, I'm you know, this is a new normal for me. Um, well, um, Steve, I know you gotta go. Um, I, I, I'm gonna be doing this uh, every Friday. So we, uh, next week we'll have a, a lender on to talk a little bit more about the rates. Uh, the lenders tend to get the most questions. So if you wanna send any questions ahead of time or in, in regards to the rates, in regards to the CARES Act, um, yeah, any type of mortgage forgiveness that um, you know, has been presented um, and, and just where they see uh, the market going uh, ahead of time, that'd be great. Um, and I'll, I'll be up next Friday around the same time and uh, until then, stay safe. Um, I wish everyone the best. Thanks. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.